Has your AC unit quit in the hottest part of the year and you're just dreading having to call an HVAC contractor, not knowing how many hundreds or thousands of dollars you're gonna to have to spend? Well, in this video, we're gonna show you three easy things to check that are very simple, very cheap, that could save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. So with that, let's jump right into it. Today's video is brought to you by Alpine Home Air, America's number one choice for quality, affordable HVAC equipment and unmatched customer service. And Filter By, your one-stop shop for all your replacement HVAC filter needs shipped directly to your door. So item number one, if your AC is not coming on, is going to be checking your condensate drain. That is such a common thing that I found, especially when I used to live in the South in Tennessee, where there's a lot of mildew buildup and um, mucusy stuff that would get built up in the condensate drain, when, especially when there's units in the attic that would multiply this problem because you have attic insulation and stuff mixing in. And I would run across service calls all the time where all it was was the condensate drain was plugged. Now the best method of doing this is simply taking a shop vacuum, finding where that PVC condensate comes out of your home, putting the vacuum on that and that will pull that debris out of that line. It's super easy. Don't put pressure on it and push it the other way because you could risk pushing one of those connections loose and causing water damage to get in your home. Definitely just get a shop vac, start pulling that out and you'll notice if there's a clog, you'll get a lot of water to come out instantly and that could be all the problem is. So a 100% free thing to do and it could save you a lot of money. Now, if you wanna do a little bit of investigating yourself and you go up into the attic and you see that that pan underneath your furnace is full of water, that means 100% that that drain has clogged. So all you need to do is get a vacuum, go to the end outside, and that will all drain out as soon as you clear that plug. It's also a good idea if that happens that you go up to the pan and you clean that out as well. Now, usually what happens is there's a safety switch on that pan up in the attic and if that switch trips, that means that's going to turn everything off and nothing is going to function. So your AC unit will not come on. Sometimes, depending on how they have it wired, your fan will stay on, but the AC will not come on. So all you have to do is drain it, that little switch will float back down, and then your AC unit will come on as usual. Now, if you have a condensate pump, that's also something to check. If your condensate pump has quit, it will do the same thing and it will not let your AC run and it will not expel that water. It will just turn everything off until you've replaced the pump. Most condensate pumps are like this one where you simply unplug it, replace the unit, plug the new one in, wire your safety switch, and you're good to go. Item number two to check is the capacitor out here on your AC unit. If you notice that your fan is running but you can't hear the hum of the compressor or vice versa, if you hear the hum of the compressor but there's no fan, that's a good indicator that your capacitor has failed. Now it's possible that both can fail at the same time so you won't hear anything running out here and your capacitor could very well be bad. Now I'm gonna show you where this is located but we have another full dedicated video on showing you more about capacitors and how easy they are to replace. You can find a capacitor for less than $20 and a lot of companies are charging between 700 and I've even heard of massive quotes of like $2,000 because people don't know what a capacitor is. So you can save all of that money, keep it in your pocket by simply replacing your capacitor yourself. I'll leave that full capacitor video linked right here so you can check that one out after this video. So once you pull the cover off of your AC unit, you're going to see a cylinder that looks like this. This is your capacitor and it is a very cheap product, but please be careful. Um, if you're working with anything electricity, just make sure you're being safe. That video that I'll, I'll leave linked up there will show how to do this safely, how to kill power to this unit and how to discharge this capacitor because these do store energy. So just make sure you're being safe. You can save a ton of money by replacing this guy right here, but this is absolutely one of the most common things that need to be replaced on your AC unit from time to time. And usually it's on the hottest day of the summer that these capacitors go bad. Something you might notice when you open this up is if it's really rusty, if these pins are not pointed straight up, if they're kind of bulged out like a Y, or if there's fluid coming out of this, those are all good indicators that this has failed. Now here's a great way that you can test to see if the capacitor is probably bad. So number one, just listen and again, be mindful if you still have power going to this. 
just listen and see if you can hear this contactor making a buzzing noise and if you see this contactor pulled in. So if this is pulled in for sure, it's calling for cooling. So it's trying to tell the compressor and the fan to come on. So that indicates that it could be the capacitor that's not allowing it to come on. That could also mean that there's not any power getting to this contactor so it can't do anything. But if you push this in and the AC unit comes on, the compressor and the fan, that means that your capacitor is not bad. Again, if you push this in and the compressor and the fan come on, that means your capacitor is not bad and your problem is elsewhere. But if you come out here and you see that this is pulled in and nothing is happening, or if your thermostat is not calling for cooling and you press this in and nothing happens, that's a good indicator that the capacitor could be bad. So just a few things that you can check to try and narrow it down. But again, make sure and check out that previous video to see a more thorough video about capacitors. Tip number three involves just checking the breakers for any breakers that have tripped. Specifically, if you see that your AC unit is like halfway in between, so it could be like right here, it might not be all the way off. What you have to do is physically push it all the way off and then all the way back on. That's how you reset a breaker. Sometimes there's just power surges and things of that nature that cause the breaker to trip. And it could be as simple as flipping a breaker off and on. I've done so many service calls where that's all it was. And of course we go through and check if there's things that caused that to happen. But a lot of times it was just a um, power surge or something like that that caused the breaker to trip. And I always feel bad charging a customer to just flip a breaker. Um, but if that's something you can do yourself, you can keep that money in your pocket. Now with that being said, a lot of people don't realize that their air handler or their furnace has a fuse or a little breaker inside of it. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to check that on your air handler or furnace. First of all, we're just gonna take these little covers off and then we'll have to take off a couple screws here to get to our blower and control board. So as soon as you pull this off, you'll see the main control board. Now, a lot of furnaces will actually have a automotive looking fuse that is in the control board, but a lot of newer furnaces will actually have this right here. So this is basically a three amp breaker. So if there's something that has tripped again because of maybe a power surge or something of that nature, this thing will be tripped and literally all you have to do is press it back in and that will reset this three amp um, breaker. And the beauty of this is you don't have to keep putting fuses in. This will just trip if, if something is causing a short. Um, but if you have a slot here for a fuse, you simply put in a three amp fuse and that could very well resolve your problem. Again, a lot of people just don't realize that their furnace has a fuse or a breaker like this. So I wanna make you aware of it so you can simply pull the covers off, check that before you call a contractor and spend a lot of money. Now, while we're right here, I just wanna throw in kind of a bonus here for number three. And of course, just make sure that your power is off before you put your hands in here. There's also an interlock um, switch there to make sure that no juice gets to this. But you can simply reach in here where the fan blade is and you can spin this. And if that fan motor is not spinning or if that fan wheel is not spinning freely, that could very well mean that your blower motor is bad and that could be the culprit. Now, a lot of times if your blower motor is bad and it's trying to go, you can hear that buzz and that's also a good indicator that your fan motor is bad. Now, something to note too is that a lot of furnaces actually have a capacitor like we showed you on the AC unit. They'll have a capacitor in here somewhere. So that's something else that you wanna check if your fan motor is spinning, it could mean that you have a bad capacitor and that's something that you wanna check as well. Well guys, I hope this video has helped you to resolve the problem on your AC unit. Our goal as always is to help you to repair your HVAC system and be able to save money and in doing so learning a skill that is invaluable. Now if your system is running and it's just not cooling and you suspect that it is low on refrigerant, abilityrefrigerants.com is an awesome resource to purchase any type of refrigerant and have it shipped right to your door. You can get it in as small of a container as two pounds for a relatively low price and you can have it shipped right to your door. So if you wanna see a full video on how to kind of diagnose and then charge a system properly, you can check out this video right there. And until next time you guys be safe, later.